Hey folks, I'm Bo Ross, and here we go. The long-awaited refresh of the Framework Laptop 16 is finally here. If you tuned into my review of the original Framework 16, published almost exactly one year ago, you'll know that there were plenty of aspects of that machine that received my hard-earned reverence, and also a few things about it that annoyed the hell out of me. So a year, some refresh parts, and one big pleasant surprise later, is the Framework 16 finally deserving of a considerable amount of your hard-earned money? Let's take a look. If this is your first time hearing about Framework, they make computers that are completely user repairable. And this is a breath of very fresh air in an industry that's been in a slow and steady death march in the opposite direction. After working their initial magic in the 13-inch thin and light category, Framework announced a more powerful 16-inch model in 2023 to much fanfare and enthusiasm. Apparently, the demand for the Framework 16 far exceeded the company's expectations. Clearly, consumers were ready for a computer like this that could enjoy the benefits of Framework's legendary repairability and modularity while also handling more demanding computing tasks. I was personally over the moon at the prospect of this computer when it was announced, and among the first in line to pick one up. I already loved the framework ethos, but needed a bit more power, specifically on the graphics side, to actually incorporate one into my workflow. As excited as many of us were to get our hands on this computer, we've all since learned that the 16-inch product category is a tougher nut to crack, and comes with its own unique challenges, especially when you include the dedicated GPU. The original Framework 16 was an incredibly ambitious endeavor that wound up being a pretty mixed bag to actually use. Before we dive into the analysis of this new version, I just want to take a moment to acknowledge that it's kind of miraculous that this thing even exists. The fact that you can buy literally any component of this computer directly from Framework and replace it yourself, well... It is a gift. And it's a gift that should not be overlooked. This computer is one of one. There's nothing else like it on the market. It's a legitimate engineering marvel. And the fact that we can buy this rig at all is frankly kind of amazing. Having said that, I owe it to both you and Framework to be objective about my experience. I'm a fan of this company and their mission, but a Framework simp, I am not. I also want to give a quick shout out to our friends over at Audio. We'll chat a bit more about them later, but all the music in today's episode came from Audio's luscious sound library. I think a lot of current and prospective customers of the Framework 16 were starting to get a little nervous that the product line may have been left for dead. After a prolonged period of radio silence about it from the company and an apparent shift of their focus to new categories of the PC market. Those concerns were finally alleviated when Framework announced a surprising slew of updates for the 16-inch model. Among those updates, we've got the latest Ryzen AI 300 series offerings from AMD, which are basically the same CPUs available in the Framework 13, with a bit more thermal headroom and a larger chassis. They offer anywhere from 10 to 25% improved performance over the outgoing Ryzen CPUs, which equates to some pretty solid gains, especially in multi-core workloads. Much to absolutely everyone's chagrin, however, there is no Strix Halo CPU option. As I understand it, that platform doesn't have enough PCIe lanes to support what the Framework 16 can do. And then there's the ever controversial topic of soldered RAM, which Framework caught a lot of blowback about in their new desktop model. Honestly, completely viable obstacles aside, it still feels like an absolute travesty to me. I feel like this computer and that APU would just be a match made in heaven for a lot of users. I'm hoping that next year, Narav and company might be able to pull off some witchcraft and make it happen. A man can dream. Framework also finally released their own version of a 240 watt power adapter, allowing the computer to reach its full performance potential. Previously, the company only offered a 180 watt adapter that caused all sorts of power delivery issues in the original Laptop 16. From my testing, this new adapter has handily solved all those issues, and I must say, as cute as a button. Just look at how tiny this thing is compared to one of my Legion power adapters. Framework's entire business model is built on the fundamental product and chassis design 
remaining mostly unchanged between generations to ensure the forward and backward compatibility of components. If it weren't for this skin that was seemingly inspired by one of Guy Fieri's bowling shirts, this first generation Framework 16 would be indiscernible from its refreshed counterpart. The updated model apparently also received some subtle tweaks to the fan geometry and cooling system, which Framework claim make the auditory experience a bit more bearable. Fan noise is an area in which the OG model suffered mightily, but I'm afraid I haven't noticed any significant difference as a result of these changes. This is still a pretty boisterous machine when you're putting it to work. And I think that's everything that's new with this release. Is there anything I'm forgetting? Previously on Boros Tech. Though it might be wishful thinking, I'm hoping next year we see an expansion bay option with something like a 5070. By far the most earth shattering news from this year's release is that shocking almost everyone, NVIDIA has joined the chat. I don't think I've ever seen so much certainty in an online community that something would never happen. And I'll be the first to admit that despite my wishful thinking from last year's video, I thought the odds were very much stacked against seeing an NVIDIA GPU in a Framework 16 anytime soon. But mercifully, here we are, and a few weeks in, I don't think it's hyperbolic to say that adding an NVIDIA GPU option may have very well saved this product line. I don't want to alienate people who aren't interested in the dedicated GPU aspect of the Framework 16, but for those of us using this computer for gaming and content creation, the differences have been stark. I also don't want to make it seem like I'm throwing shade at AMD. These new CPUs are just fine, and if they had even a passing interest in the mobile GPU market, I'm sure they could make a worthy successor to the underwhelming 7700S that shipped with the original Framework 16. For me, that aforementioned 7700S was the source of almost every significant problem I had with the original Framework 16. The 5070, at least so far, has really felt like the rising tide that raises all ships. I've been absolutely punishing this machine every day with photo and video editing, music production, and the most demanding games I can throw at. And though it's still not perfect, it finally feels up to the task in a way that the OG model basically never did. Overall graphics performance has definitely improved, around 30% give or take from my testing, but more than that, having an NVIDIA option just makes the whole experience feel less haunted. I hosted a little LAN party recently, and I'm only slightly ashamed to admit that my friends and I played Arc Raiders for 10 hours straight. Based on my experience gaming with the original Framework 16, to say that I was nervous about whether or not this new model was up to the task would be a dramatic understatement. I'm pleased and frankly a little shocked to report that this rig displayed a level of unbothered nonchalance that I would only expect from a much larger gaming laptop. The 5070 just makes this machine feel so much more competent and capable. And the fact that Framework made good on their lofty promise to provide owners with an attractive upgrade path is incredibly encouraging. And that high performance stability is palpable in more than just gaming workloads. I've been using this computer to make stuff every single day, and it finally feels like a legit content creation workstation. Two card readers, enough power to confidently handle my 6K video files, and enough durability to bring on location without dreading whether or not something might happen to it, all make this an incredible tool for content creation. You know what else is an incredible tool for content creation? Audio. If you love making stuff, you understand the importance of great music. Nothing stirs the soul quite like a perfectly curated track. You also probably know that using music in published work can be a dauntingly complex, frustrating aspect of content creation. Audio makes this process incredibly simple. You don't have to worry about those pesky copyright strikes, and their library is chock full of songs that you and your audience will actually want to listen to. Check out Audio's magical music library today, and if you use the links and promo codes down in the description below, you can help out the channel while simultaneously getting some unfathomable discounts on their Pro and Pro Plus subscription plans. And whether it's affiliate links, promo codes, or AdSense, 10% of every dollar I make from this YouTube channel is donated to the Minnesota Humane Society, 
where I adopted my best bud, Nova. Okay, back to the video. As welcome as this new 5070 option is, we're still unfortunately relegated to 8 gig of VRAM, which has understandably ruffled a few feathers. Framework has explained some of their rationale around this, but it doesn't change the fact that depending on your use case, 8 gig is starting to feel like a bottleneck for certain applications. And at $650, kind of stings to shell out this kind of money for a component that doesn't feel particularly future-proof. They've also introduced a new display panel. Kind of. It's essentially the exact same panel as the original, but along with the 5070, now unlocks support for G-Sync and Advanced Optimus. This is objectively good news, but the real bummer is that for those that want to just buy the 5070 expansion bay to add to their existing Framework 16, you know, the entire premise and appeal of this platform, they can't take advantage of those new features without also buying the new display. This is a bit soul-crushing, considering you're spending an additional $250 for what's ostensibly the exact same panel. And now you've got an extra, essentially useless laptop display just laying around. It sounds like Framework unsuccessfully tried to find a way to make this work through firmware, but I would have loved to see some sort of partial trade-in discount for those with the old panel. This is another example of the benefits of this machine sometimes getting a little bit muddled. It's great that we have an upgrade path, but it's kind of ridiculous that you're spending damn near $1,000 to upgrade to another mid-tier GPU with 8 gig of VRAM at least if you want to take advantage of all the features. Adding a little insult to injury, the panel in my unit actually has some pretty rough IPS bleed. I've been using the original Framework 16 as my daily driver pretty steadily since it came out. And as much as I love the concept of this machine, using it has mostly felt like a bit too much compromise to be worthwhile. Power delivery issues, thermal problems, quality control concerns, and some of the worst firmware development I've ever seen have made the ownership experience kind of an exercise in frustration. I had my doubts that this refresh model was going to move the needle to any significant degree. But I gotta admit, it's been a very different experience this time around. When my new DIY Framework 16 with the Ryzen 9 and 5070 arrived, I hit the ground running expecting a pretty similar experience. To my surprise and delight, unlike the first generation, this computer has my absolute favorite quality in a tool. I don't have to think about it. Whatever I throw at it, the damn thing just works. And I can't tell you how refreshing that is after two years of randomly wanting to throw my original Framework 16 into an active volcano. Make no mistake, I have love for my OG Framework 16, but it's the kind of love you feel when you're being gaslit in an emotionally abusive relationship. Sure, they treat me terribly, but deep down they love me, and I know they can change. Just one more firmware update. Certainly everything will be different this time. Using the first iteration of this machine just made me yearn for consistency and predictability, and that's exactly what this new generation has ushered in. I'm not saying it's without the occasional quirk or peccadillo. Like, sometimes it gets confused for a bit when trying to connect to one of my workstation docks, and this rear right port kind of randomly decided to stop working for a day or so before eventually coming back, but it does make the original feel like something of a half-baked prototype by comparison. No longer does it seem like you're trading confidence and stability for the magical level of repairability and modularity that only a framework computer can offer. I still think it's overpriced, and ultimately you might be better off buying a used ThinkPad for one-third the cost, but after this refresh, the Framework 16 finally feels like a real computer. And if owning a machine that you don't have to stress over keeping on the road for many years is appealing to you, I can finally recommend it without nearly as much reservation. I should also say that many of the complaints I had about the original Framework 16 have finally been remedied through firmware and the arrival of that new power adapter. And because this is a framework, anything that's been introduced in this new model can also be incorporated into the original, if you're willing to pay for it. To me, the 5070 is the real secret sauce. If you've got an OG Framework 16, I definitely wouldn't be in any rush to upgrade your mainboard, but if graphics is a priority, I would vehemently endorse upgrading to the 5070. I made a video about modifying the Framework 16 to include an Oculink port, which is an option that's basically unique to this computer because of its expansion-based system. It unlocks a stellar, one-of-a-kind eGPU experience. And if I'm being honest, I still think that's the most compelling version of this computer 
that's by far the easiest to recommend. As configured from Framework, you're paying a premium for a peerless level of repairability, but performance that's not really anything to write home about. With an Oculink setup, you're unlocking a graphics performance advantage that even the most powerful and expensive gaming laptops on the market just can't compete with. If that's a prospect that intrigues you, I would encourage you to check that video out and decide for yourself. I've had such a blast making these first few videos on my channel. Have a tremendous amount of gratitude for all the kind comments and support. And I'm really excited to bring you guys more tech content in 2026. We're knocking on the door of a thousand subscribers. So if you should feel so inclined, hitting that subscribe or like button are always appreciated. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.